Well, no surprise, I'm back with a, you guessed it, a 1022. And an item from Buffer Technologies that's uh, just about as smart as an owl with a postgraduate degree. This is a, a bolt buffer, and a uh, good thing about these, I don't know that they're all that necessary uh, if you're shooting standard ammunition or target ammunition, uh, but you'll notice when you shoot high-speed ammunition that you hear that, tend to hear that clang when the bolt hits the uh, bolt stop pin. So we're going to go ahead and stick this in. The other thing that uh, these are really terrific for is if you're going to build the uh, a 1017 um, the, with a 22 Mach 2 in it. That bolt's coming back at a high rate of speed, and it's really nice when it touches this polymer buffer as opposed to clanging off that steel pin. All right, you all know how to take apart a 1022. If you don't, AGI certainly has a video. The 1022 Armorer's course, it'll show you how to do this. But I'm going to take it apart off camera, and we'll be right back. We've stopped here because uh, I just wanted to show you where this goes. This, of course, is the bolt stop pin. It's a steel pin, goes through the top of the receiver, and you can see here it, uh, you can see it here inside the receiver, and that the rear of the bolt, the cutout that whacks against there. So we're going to replace this pin with the buffer. So drive that out. Let's just take a minute here. And then this pin simply goes right in and replaces the existing pin. All right, well, that's it. There's, uh, I don't know how, how it could be any easier than that, but if you look here, you will notice that this is a light gray color, and some of you may be going, oh, I don't want a light gray uh, pin showing on my gun. However, when it's in the receiver, or rather in the stock, you'll notice that that's down below the level of stock, and you'll never see it at all. So a nice piece, really good idea, again, particularly if you're using it with a... Uh, uh, 17 HMR, or 17 rather Mach 2 and one of these 1022s is a conversion. You really need that to keep that bolt from banging against there. You can crack the stock, you can uh, uh, you know, start uh, peening out the rear of the bolt. Not a good idea. Put these in, you'll be in good shape. Alright, we're back this morning with another item from uh, Buffer Technologies and even though they're the buffer people, they make a really nice item called the Mag Cinch. Uh, these work well for uh, AR-15 magazines, AR-10, AKs, uh, uh, M1As, uh, all, of, all of the various large magazines. And what they do is they hold two magazines together. And the reason that this is better than a plastic clip is that they're, for all practical purposes, bulletproof. They have nylon webbing here and uh, some sort of space-age polymer here. Um, on the separators that is just, it's really tough stuff. Now, when you put these together, and I've already done this, the straps come about, oh, six inches longer or so than they are now on each end, so it gives you plenty of room to put a larger magazine and cut off. I've already done that because you're not interested in watching me cut straps here. Now, when you put these together, the front part, this is, goes towards the front of the magazine. And this part goes towards the rear, the part with the screw. You want to make sure that the screw here is backed almost completely out of the, uh, of the front piece here because it makes it a lot easier to get together. All right? And these are separators which go between the magazines. Now, the right magazine needs to be uh, about an inch and a half lower than the left magazine. So we'll position this up here about an inch and a half up. And then we'll take the left magazine and slide it in the same way. Now the easiest thing is we'll just slide this up here so that we have room. And we'll go ahead and put the second one on. slid up a little bit here. Now we've got them together here and you'll notice that the bottom is even with the, uh, the bottom strap is even with the left magazine and the right magazine without measuring is roughly an inch and a half. The only thing you have to be sure of is that the uh, strap here is at least uh, low enough 
on the magazine so that the magazine will go ahead and enter the mag well. Okay, so let's go ahead and once those are in and set like that, this is where the tricky part comes with the design. By tightening this screw in and pulling these two uh, pieces together, it also very much tightens up the nylon webbing. Duh. Now let's get that in here. All right, now those are in there pretty tight. And by doing that, you see that these things are locked together like they're iron. They are just not going anywhere. By pulling these screws down tight here, you'll notice that the belts have now pulled down tight all the way around here, which makes these things really tough, and they're not going anywhere. Um, we'll take that out in the field and shoot it. If I didn't mention it before, these are Brownell's new mil-spec magazines that they're making for the U.S. military. They're really nice uh, magazines. They've got some sort of a coating on them. I don't know what it is, but it feels slick, almost like, uh, like Teflon, and it's pretty tough. The followers work real well, and I've had really good luck with them. I like these magazines a lot. These happen to be the 30-rounders. Anyway, let's, uh, we got them together. Let's try them in a gun and make sure they fit before we embarrass ourselves somewhere in the field. As you can see, we're clear here. We don't have a bolt in the gun. Okay. Fits from the right. Fits from the left. Locks up. Everything's fine. Looks like we're in good shape there. Now, if I didn't mention it before, I will now. You can uh, cut these off really short if you like, but it kind of limits you to taking them on and off later, even though by loosening the screws you should be able to get them on and off and swap magazines with them. But probably the easiest way to do it is uh, the old field expedient with either duct tape or black electrician's tape and just wrap each one several times with the tape. Uh, not only will that keep your, uh, uh, the ends of the, of the uh, belts down, but of course it's something else that will deaden sound as you bang these against something, okay? And keeping noise down is always a good idea. Okay, we're out at the range with the Mag Cinch from Buffer Technologies. Two magazines for an AR-15 put together. Let's see how it actually works in the field. I haven't practiced this, so let's just give it a roll. Not bad. That was pretty fast change for uh, just not really having worked with it. What's great about this is both feed lips are up. Both sets of feed lips are up. Unlike taping two mags together end to end, um, you're not going to have, every time you go to ground, be shoving dirt into your uh, magazine and into the feed lips themselves damage them. By having one magazine in the gun and then being able to switch to the other mag magazine, the other magazine being high and up out of the way so it's not overly extended, push the magazine catch, just transition over, slap it right in, Hit the slide release, and you're continuing. Pretty doggone fast. Uh, that's Mag Cinch by Buffer Technologies, and I'm giving this one a thumbs up for sure.